seeing Michigan come alive and watching it go through the water temps go up and the days getting longer um, and the trees budding and watching the smallmouth go from their winter lies creeping out to the more favorable lies in very obvious areas, you literally watch that happen and you're immersed in it. I, I can't give it up. You know, people ask, like, you know, how long are you gonna guide, you know? It's like, I'm gonna go until my shoulders blow up. Like, I just, like, it's, it's in me, I love it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's something special, and it's definitely, as I grow older, it's something I don't take for granted, because I do have a ton of responsibilities outside of rowing a boat for eight to 10 hours a day. It's physically demanding, it's mentally demanding. Uh, you go through a lot of super glue, put your hands back together, a lot of wool, a lot of rain suits. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for anything. My name is Mike Schultz from Dexter, Michigan. I'm a fly fishing guide and fly shop owner. Yeah, Detroit, born and raised. Uh, you know, what you, what you hear about it might not 100% be the truth. The people are of a different breed. You know, it truly is, you know, Detroit hustles harder. Guy just grinding, you know, that's, that's Detroit to me. And uh, I've lived here my whole life and it's definitely, ingrained in me. You know, just like a lot of people out there, you know, my father introduced me to fishing, you know, I going at it at the most basic level. And uh, you know, when it really got crazy was of course when you get a car. Right. So you get you get you get wheels and uh, next thing you know you're you know if you're into it you're you're finding any piece of water and in my case I found the, the closest piece of moving water and that was the Huron River. Smallmouth, accessible in urban streams all across North America. And he has just made quite a dent in the industry as well as the, as well as the smallmouth fishery. The coolest thing about smallmouth bass fishing is seeing them eat it. Um, that's cool, that's fun, seeing that fish just assassinate that fly. Kind of, if I was a fish, I'd probably be a smallmouth, and if I was a body of water, I'd probably be a river. You know, at an early age, you know, I was an entrepreneur, you know, like without being an entrepreneur, you know, I was always the kid that was looking for a way to, to get ahead a little bit. I started, uh, you know, I was into baseball cards, I was into skateboarding and that kind of stuff. So, you know, outside of hockey, that was the things that I did, you know, that took you into those kind of mom and pop joints, you know, your business at its kind of a basic level, right? And uh, I always envied that. And I remember my mom always telling, you know, one of these, these stores that I would get into and make her drive me to, she would tell the owners or whoever they were working, he, he's gonna, he wants to own a baseball car shop, or he wants to own a skateboard shop. But eventually I, I found a fly shop. A different, a different fly shop. Like I said, you go to some fly shops, kind of hoity-toity, um, you know, just chill, treat everyone the same. Many, many years ago, when Schultze walked into the shop and said, I want a job, uh, we sat down and I tried to impart whatever wisdom I have on, on as many of the, the people as I could. And the three things that I kept pounding into Schultz, especially towards the end of my tenure there at the shop, you got to do three things and you got to do them in spades and you cannot let up on them. First thing is you got to have the merchandise. You got to have good, better, best, and you better have it on the shelf. Then you got to teach people how to use that stuff. He's excellent at both A and B. And then C, you gotta take him fishing. I first met Mike, I was uh, I was still in college at the time. He had just opened the shop not too long before then. He taught me everything I know. I mean, that's how I got my start. It, it was like a, a drive home one night from the shop in like November. I was, I had one more semester left of school and he basically just said like, you know, if you want a guide after you graduate, I'll, I'll teach you everything you need to know. You just need to do X, Y, and Z to prove to me that you're gonna do it. 
just just to have that opportunity for someone to take a chance on you know a dumb 22 year old pretty bold move on his part luckily it worked out for me <laughs> and him <laughs> but i'm very grateful very grateful the, the whole the whole team aspect of our of the of the shop is i mean that's that's it it's a team like sure there are you, you can't have an ego. You really can't. You gotta be team first mentality no matter if you're playing hockey or you're running a business. Uh, I don't think I ever really put that much thought into it when it came to longevity. Never, I'm not a plan B kind of guy. And I still, I still make a lot of calls off gut, you know. I'm just honest with people. I'm not the smartest person. Like, you know, I'm just, I'm that dude that just outworks everybody, you know. And it's the truth. That's a, a, a major, uh, you know, key in life. Like, you can be the smartest dude if you're lazy and not willing to do the, you know, get your nose there. It's not gonna happen for you. Um, you know, that's that's grind to shine to me is like just buy hope, whatever it takes. Get it done. If I gotta stay there till two in the morning and go through a bottle of uh, Gold Bond to get it done, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna keep moving. I'm gonna keep grinding. We're gonna get it done. We're gonna outwork anybody. You know, that's a challenge. Like seriously, like step up. You wanna try to go up against what we built? Get it.